You're listening to the main event with Zach Gelb and Chase Sr. on WHIP. Welcome back, everybody. Time in the WHIP studios is 1138. A little beautiful day by you two to bring us back from that commercial break. Now joining us on the hotline was a long special teams coach in the National Football League. Actually coached Tim Tebow with the New York Jets, and that is our dear friend. We last saw him in Radio Row, and I believe it was New Orleans. It's been a long time, and that is Mike Westhoff. Coach, it's Zach and Chase here in Philly. Thanks for a few minutes. How are you? Oh, guys, I'm doing fine. Thanks. Well, glad to be back. Well, yes, it's definitely great to have you. And last time we talked, we were talking a little bit about cheesesteaks, the Super Bowl, and the season that you had with the Jets. And uh, I know that you have some family in Philadelphia. So have you been back to Philly recently to get a nice cheesesteak? Yeah, I do. Well, I haven't had a cheesesteak, but I get back. My my son and uh, his wife and two two two, two grandsons live in Bryn Mawr. And uh, my brother and his family live in Westchester. So I, I get back quite often, especially when I'm in New York doing some of my things with ESPN radio or SMY television, then I get a chance to come down and visit. So I do as often as I can. And there's been a lot of New York people infiltrating Philadelphia, especially with the football world. Last year, Mark Sanchez came over and was the Eagles quarterback once Nick Foles went down. And now Tim Tebow, whose last stop was with the Patriots, but his last start act, stop actually playing a game was with the New York Jets. He comes into Philadelphia on a one-year deal with Chip Kelly. You had Tim Tebow in New York. Why do you think it didn't work out when Tebow signed with the Jets uh, back a few years ago? Well, it was, I believed that the, the guys under which we brought him in was going to be a multi-dimensional role where Tim would, you know, obviously he'll compete at quarterback, but it would be, you know, more of a hybrid type player. Uh, it just never materialized and worked out that way. I used them on our punt team as our personal protector, and, and it gave us a, a real weapon. We ran numerous fakes and were very successful with them uh, and had a lot of fun. But then it just didn't quite, you know, all of a sudden like, he was just trying to be the backup quarterback and compete, and, and he really did not do very well at that role. And the area that I thought I would see him in um, never materialized. And so it, it ended up being a relative disaster and kind of a shame. We know that he's a diligent player, and the guy works just so hard going back to seeing some of the speeches he gave in college and his work ethic in college when he won national championships with Florida. He's maybe one of, if not the greatest college football players of all time, but his arm strength just doesn't work in the NFL, and I agree with you. They have to find a certain role for Tim Tebow on this roster if he is, in fact, on this roster when the season starts in September. But a big question also with Tebow, the word distraction comes up. When you dealt with him in New York, did you at all view him as a distraction? No, I never did. You know, the distraction, unfortunately, you know, when Tim's been in such a high-profile position, as you mentioned, you know, maybe college, one of college football's great players, maybe the greatest, certainly in consideration for that role, um, he, he just a lot of attention comes with him. He doesn't necessarily garnish it. Uh, I always thought he was a fine gentleman. I liked being around him. He was a hard worker. He'd do the you know, first in, last out kind of guy. He's sitting in my office late at night after everyone had gone home uh, talking about how to run fakes on the punt team. That's what he was doing. And so I, I don't see that, um, that, that that he's a big distraction when it comes to that because it doesn't, it's not generated from him. Yes, there'll be attention. There's media attention. But I think that can be minimized. I also believe a lot of that will reflect up to how the Philadelphia Eagles and Chip Kelly in particular, how he handles Tim and what positions that the media that are viewing camp are seeing him in. And if they're seeing him in a specific role, then I think that that could diminish some of that. That would be very interesting to see how that all develops. Mike Westoff is our guest right now on the main event. Mike, it's Chase. And if it wasn't Tim Tebow, I don't think this would be made a big deal because he's going to come in and he's a third or fourth string quarterback battling to make the roster as one of the last quarterbacks on the roster. But because it is Tim Tebow, I believe that's why this story is such a big deal because he is a polarizing figure, which leads me to my next point. When you're in the presence of Tim Tebow, in your years working with him, did you get the sense that he was a polarizing guy? Yeah, to 
to a, to a degree only because of, of his history and what and what that brought with him. But being around him, he is very much the most down to earth guy. I remember he used to come in and talk to me about wanting to go out on Friday night to watch a high school football game. It's awesome. That's what was important to him. So he's not, you know, an attention burden. It just comes with the package. But that's not that's not what it's all about. And I see this kind of thing the way I'm looking at what Chip Kelly's done. And I, I don't know him that well. You know, I, I know he, he's gone out on a limb. Chip Kelly, he's gone out on a limb. And I'm, I'm sure he's given you guys plenty to talk about. Of, of, course, course. of course. It's been the only thing in town that you could talk about because the Sixers stink. Uh, you also have the Flyers. They're awful. They're not making the playoffs. And the Phillies are a joke. So it's been all Eagles talk in this town, Coach. Well, then it's not all bad. But I think there's a possibility from what I'm hearing, and, and, and I don't know for sure, but at the owners' meetings after the draft, that the TAP rule could very well be addressed. And it's quite possible that they would maybe, I know they're interested in, in, in trying, because I talked to, to um, Troy Vincent, actually, I'm going up to New York to meet with him in May to talk about some of the things that, that are happening in the kicking game and how it's being so watered down. But I don't know. I know they don't like the non-play that the PATs become. So it's possible. I'm not sure, but it's possible that they could pass a rule where if you want to go for two, they'll put the ball on the one-yard line. Now, maybe Tim Tebow's role becomes a little more paramount, and Chip Kelly could maybe be getting ahead of the curve. I'm not sure of this. I don't know, but it's an interesting thing to see, and he really is not risking anything by trying this or having been prepared for this. I think, this is what I just, when I'm looking at Chip Kelly from, from afar, um, you know, if all the emphasis goes to what he's done on offense, with the hurry up, the no huddle, et cetera. But I think he's taken a little bit bigger view of the whole football team than what he gets credit for. I know he's trying to rebuild their defense. He rebuilt their special teams last year into the best special teams unit in the NFL. There's no doubt about it. He did that. Because they, were, they, they weren't very good before that. Now, special teams roles have been diminished in the NFL because of the rule changes. That's, that's a fact. But Chip gave a great deal of emphasis to it, and they were very good. So I think Tim Tebow, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, as I see it from afar, is maybe a part of this broader view that he has of the whole football team, and maybe there's a place for him, and if not, then he has a risk punch. That's why I believe he brought him in. And there's been a lot of talk about that, Mike, of Chip Kelly being that innovative thinker. And, and if that uh, two-point conversion is moved to the one, I mean, there's not really a better quarterback in the league that you'd rather have to try to convert and get those two points than Tim Tebow. But another point is that Tebow has been working on his throwing mechanics with Tom House, who has worked with Tom Brady. And Tim Tebow usually had that long, loopy delivery that took a lot of time to deliver the football. If he did work with Tom House, and obviously the Eagles think that those mechanics have improved, do you think that could have a big impact on Tebow becoming a better quarterback, or do you still think that he will struggle with the same things that he did? Well, that's a really good question and a good point. I don't think anyone can answer it until we take a look. I think you hit the nail right on the head. I believe that he can't improve that. How much is it going to be enough? Is it going to be significant enough? I don't know. But I believe he can improve it. I know one thing. He's diligent, and he'll work at it. Now, will he revert back you know, under the pressure to maybe that, that slower delivery and not picking things up uh, as well and maybe not being quite the quarterback that you want? That's possible. But it's certainly, to me, worth taking a look and trying. And that's what I think they've done. But I also believe, knowing Tim Tebow and how hard he'll work at something, that if anyone can do it, are, you, are, are we going to see Dan Marino out there? No, I, I don't think so. But will we see an improved quarterback? I certainly believe that that's very possible, and it'll actually be fun to watch. We're talking to Mike Westhoff, longtime special teams man, now does some work up in New York with ESPN and SNY. Uh, former Jets special team coach joins us right now. Zach Gelb and Chase Sr. here with you on WHIP Radio in Philadelphia, all via iHeartRadio. I want to take you back to when the Jets traded up 
with, I think it was the Browns, if my memory serves me right, to make a trade for Mark Sanchez. Because all the talk in Philadelphia has been about the fascination of Chip Kelly and Marcus Mariota. Right now, the Eagles sit at number 20, and there's a good chance Mariota goes in that two slot. How tough is it to trade up on draft day that many spots? And just take me through that draft room feel when you guys traded up to get Mark Sanchez. Well, with Mark, you know, it was in a position that, that we were in a position that what we could trade, it wasn't like we were giving away the, the, the farm. And, 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 you know, we were in a position where, where it was a good deal for both teams. To move that far for Philadelphia is going to really take some finagling. I, I, I don't see it happening. I don't know how they could do it. It would be very interesting. You know, there's, there's a lot of reason to suspect that, uh, that you know, San Diego – uh, wants to put uh, Philip Rivers into a package and maybe make a deal with Tennessee, where then uh, Tennessee would have Philip Rivers and uh, then, then San Diego, excuse me, uh, then they'd be able to draft, uh, be able to draft Mariota. Those are all interesting things. To move up as far as Philly has to go, I think it's going to be too big a price to pay, and there are too many intangibles along the way. I did hear a deal where uh, Philly might be able to work something out with Cleveland. I heard that presented. That made a little sense to me. That, that was kind of interesting to me. So I don't know. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. Um, I'm sure they're exploring every single option, but you have to be careful you know, what you give away and you know, what you give away to, to get this. And I, I think that's a gigantic answer and a big, big puzzle out there. It wasn't that big of a deal for us at the time. It was like, you know, what we were offering wasn't catastrophic. It helped them. And I could see why they would make the trade, and it worked out pretty good for us. Although Mark was a part of a pretty good football team and didn't have to carry us in any way, shape, or form. And we were good on defense. We led the league in rushing. I had an excellent special teams unit. Uh, so we were a pretty good ball club. And Mark was an ingredient that we needed. Uh, I, I, I think that's a little bit different. And then, you know, all of a sudden, the guy that has to come in and carry your football team, Mark did not do that for us. He helped us in a great deal when he was surrounded by a good team. We went to two AFC championship games. When we broke away from that formula, well, we weren't the same team. We just weren't. Mike, last one for me. The Eagles set an NFL record last year with seven special teams returns touchdowns, and you said that was the best unit in the NFL last season, led by head uh, special teams coach Dave Phipp, Darren Sproles, Cody Parkey, and Trey Burton all made it to the Pro Bowl. I'm just curious, have you ever had any interaction with Dave Phipp? And if not, have you heard anything in the NFL circles about him as a head coach? Because I firmly believe it's only a matter of time before he gets a promotion with some organization in the NFL. That, that, that's, a, that's a good question. I have not. I watched what they did. Um, I, I thought they did a great job. I was a little bit, when I, actually, I was at a college. I do some consulting for different colleges. And the guy wanted to study some of the things. And we were studying some of the stuff that Philadelphia did. Actually, I was expecting to see a little bit more intricate design. They were really kind of, kind of basic, kind of simple. Uh, but yet they were very efficient in that simplicity. Um, I thought he had an excellent group. Also, there are some really watered-down teams that they're playing, and I think that helped them. I watched them run a touchdown against the Washington Redskins, and, and, and I'm, they didn't block anybody. They didn't block, I don't care what anyone said. They didn't block anybody. <laughs> the Washington Redskins, guys running down the field look like that's for my development. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I could have I strapped them up, Mike. Like, like the guys I see out on the golf course with the big shorts and little legs. And, oh, my God, they're terrible. <laughs> They, had, they did a nice job of putting it all together. So to be honest with you, I think I think there's a chance to that. But I think those chances are, are not quite as good as they once were because you don't have the number of variables. They don't have the plays. They just don't have the plays. So consequently, you know, uh, an owner would take a look and say, okay, uh, you know, what has he really done? And that, mm-hmm. that's going to be an interesting question. From what I saw... They were very, very efficient and, uh, and really did a nice job. And I think Kelly did a good job of that. And, and with, uh, with the young man that runs that football with their special teams, I thought he did an excellent job. But will that transfer? I'm not sure of that. that that's a really good question to answer. Um, you guys would know him better than me because you have contact. I, I have not had. I, have not, I know where he's been, and I kind of I talked to a guy the other day about him, uh, a coach. And he was telling me about his background and the types of, because he has to play him. 
Mm-hmm. And that's why we got into the conversation. He called me up to ask me something specific. But we'll, we'll wait and see. Like one of the things that I'm very disappointed in is one of the reasons I'm going to New York. I think the kicking game in general has been watered down almost to the point of where it's being washed out. Now, I think the Eagles took advantage of the lesser opportunities they had and did a great job. I mean a great job of capitalizing on that. Because you just don't have as many chances as you used to. I think that's a big, big mistake in the league. You're right, and it's kind of feel like they're trying to eliminate it from the game, especially the way that kickoffs are right now. And you're still going to need kickers to come in there, and there's still going to be a very good chance the Super Bowl could come down to a final play of a 50-yard field goal, so special teams is always of an importance. Mike Westoff, I feel like you should be a national analyst, kind of like what Mike Pereira does uh, with the referees, and they should have you in the booth of every single NFL game or in some kind of studio just to break down these games. You were excellent today. We appreciate the time, and let's talk to you again real soon. I enjoy it. Thanks, guys. You've got a lot to talk about. One thing, I know <laughs> my son and brother have been listening to you guys. You keep, you always have something going down there, especially with the Eagles. <laughs> All right. Thanks, we Mike. appreciate it. Thanks, Coach.